Good evening and welcome to another presentation from the Agency for Public Information, the program which keeps you informed on the plans, programs and policies of the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am Shanna Daniel. Just ahead, government continues to invest in early childhood education in this country. Some young entrepreneurs, mainly from the local creative arts industry, share their success stories. And we have highlights from the opening of the 2018 Gospel Festival. The details to this informative package will follow Newswatch. Stay with us. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us for News Watch. I'm Ishii Siasam. 23 teachers and two curriculum officers from across 13 Caribbean states will participate in a three-day boot camp hosted by the Caribbean Examinations Council from April 4th to 6th at the Iberosto Hotel in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Sponsored by Jez Rita of Germany and the Organization of American States, the OAS, the boot camp is designed to equip and to familiarize teachers of Cape Green Engineering to use resources that have been created to support the implementation of the syllabus, which was launched in 2016. At the completion of the boot camp, participants are expected to have a clear understanding of the requirements of the CAPE engineering syllabus, be able to use resources to guide students in the completion of the CAPE green engineering syllabus, be aware of the importance of the resources to facilitate the formative assessment process, and acquire first-hand information on the operations of a renewable energy facility. For the first two days, participants will explore the integrating of resources in lesson planning, while on the final day, they will do a study tour of Wigton Wind Farm, which is the largest wind energy facility in the English-speaking Caribbean, located in Rose Hill, Manchester. Teachers participating in the boot camp will come from six form schools and colleges in Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Belize, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Trinidad and Tobago. A project intended to increase preparedness for volcanoes and other natural hazards and reduce climate change impacts in beneficiary communities will be officially launched here on Thursday, April 5th. The project is supported by the Caribbean Development Bank and the UWI Seismic Research Center and funded by the Community Disaster Risk Reduction Fund. It aims to increase knowledge and awareness of volcano and multi-hazard risk, enhance adaptive capacity and project management. The project will be launched at the Sandy Bay Government School commencing at 4 p.m. In commemoration of World Autism Awareness Day 2018, the SVG Autism Society held a tea party on Sunday, April 1st at the official residence of the Prime Minister to raise awareness on autism. The event was also held to give persons an opportunity to make contributions to support the speech and behavioral clinic for autistic persons. Speaking at the event, Dr. Mishka Duncan Adams said raising awareness on autism is critical as many persons are unaware of what autism is. Many children with autism, they are misdiagnosed and very much misunderstood. They are persons who would tell you that they are classified as being troublesome children, disruptive, rude, antisocial, mentally retarded, and a lot of other negative connotations that are affixed to the word autism. Now, families are generally stigmatized by our society and society on a whole, and they lack the support as they would have to struggle on a daily basis on with raising a child with autism. 
Dr. Duncan Adams says dealing with an autistic person is challenging and is urging persons to accept and support persons who are autistic. A child with autism has no choice. So autism is not a choice. But our willingness to accept, acceptance is a choice that we all have. Okay, so I would please, would like you to, uh, each and every individual, for us to change our attitudes when it comes to autism and when it comes to special needs on a whole and to be supportive of the families. It is a struggle to get to know a child with autism, to, to, to reach out to families that are affected. World Autism Day is an internationally recognized day on the 2nd of April every year, encouraging member states of the United Nations to take measures to raise awareness about people with autism throughout the world. And finally, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Commerce invites Vincentians to apply for the Taiwanese Foreign English Teaching FET program 2018-2019. The program provides an enriching opportunity for Vincentians to work in Taiwan. The ideal candidates must be a qualified English teacher who will be recruited to teach in K-9 public schools in Taiwan. Officials in the Department of Foreign Policy and Research in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Commerce indicate that the deadline for the application is April 23, 2018 and application forms and other guidelines can be accessed on the FETS website. Applications should be submitted to the bilateral unit in the ministry on or before the deadline. And that's it for Newswatch this evening. I'm inviting you to stay with us for the rest of our programming. I'm Ishi Sam. Good evening. future in your hands with early childhood education administrators and supervisors we lifting the standards throughout this land ensuring high quality of service you provide we lifting the ballot high standards be your guide let us strive let's get it right the nation's future is in your hands to learn more about the new Early Childhood Education Standards, please contact the Early Childhood Desk Curriculum Development Unit, Ministry of Education, at telephone number 4571466 or 4561111, extension 450. A message from the Ministry of Education and UNICEF. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, then welcome. This is the presentation from the API. As part of the government's thrust of revolutionizing the education system here, early childhood education continues to be high on the agenda and the Ministry of Education's newest initiative is the restructuring of the curriculum for early childhood in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A signing ceremony was held last week to facilitate the first phase of this process. The API's Sheridan Lewis was there and tells us more in the following report. Early childhood education is a crucial part of educating the populace since it lays the foundation for future learning by imparting knowledge and fundamental skills during the formative years of a child. Cognizant of this reality, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, through the Ministry of Education, has embarked on the first phase of restructuring the early childhood curriculum. Staying true to its mandate of revolutionizing the education system in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. With the financial support of the OAS DCF project, a signing ceremony was held on Thursday, March 29th at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Conference Room and saw officials from the Education and Finance Ministries and representative of the OAS join forces to commence a new beginning for early childhood here. Permanent Secretary within the Ministry of Education, National Reconciliation and Information, Maureen Williams, in her remarks, created 
created a backdrop of the project by drawing reference to the SDGs and the importance of education towards development. Sustainable Development Goal 4 has to do with education in the post-2015 development agenda. It aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. We are cognizant of the fact that the curriculum plays an essential role in enabling quality learning, a crucial element necessary for the attaining of this goal. It is the curriculum that determines, to a large extent, whether education is inclusive and consequently ensures that provision is equitable. It is the curriculum that provides the structure for the provision of quality learning, especially where teachers might be underqualified or inexperienced, their classrooms under-resourced, and their students lacking the prior framework within which to situate their learning. The curriculum, in other words, provides that bridge between education and development. And it is the competencies associated with lifelong learning and aligned with development needs in the broadest holistic sense of the term that span that bridge. The pre-primary and preschool curriculum which is currently in use in our centers across St. Vincent and the Grenadines, has been in existence for over 15 years. Since then, I'm sure you would agree with me that there have been major strides in early childhood, in the early childhood sector, and we have been exposed to a number of innovative ways that children learn. Therefore, it stands to reason that our curriculum must reflect these changes. And uh, I must add uh, personally that we are very proud of our senior education officer with responsibility for early childhood education, who has made a significant impact and also inroads into the system into the, the early childhood education aspect as it existed and she has really worked tirelessly in bringing us quite far along the path and we look forward to reaping all that effort that has been put in in that sector. Mrs. Cambridge, thank you very much. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is committed to education at all levels. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has invested a significant amount of time and money in improving the education system over the past decade. The country, as I'm sure we are all aware, has as its mandate universal early childhood education in the not too distant future. Additionally, the government has also committed to its promise for one graduate per household. As such, there has to be a concerted effort to improve not only the qualifications of teachers, but also of the school environment. A revised curriculum is one aspect of improving the quality of services offered in early childhood centers throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are therefore very grateful to the Organization of American States for their willingness to partner with us in restructuring our early childhood curriculum. We will endeavor to craft a curriculum that is tailored to meet the needs of our young children and with a Caribbean particularity. Since play has been identified as an integral part in the way our young children learn this will form a major part of the new curriculum, just to give a bit of insight into what we are thinking. So too will movement and music, and of course, technology. We believe exciting times are ahead for our early childhood subsector. 
Director of Economic Planning within the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning, Laura Anthony Brown, outlined that the enhancement of early childhood education is paramount to the government's overall plan and thanked the OAS for their contribution towards this effort. The agreement, as you have heard, provides support to the government through the Ministry of Education to promote universal access to and to strengthen delivery of comprehensive and importantly quality early childhood education in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Our country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, has had a long, respectful and beneficial relationship with the OAS and we are pleased that the organization is supporting this important initiative. In our 2013-2025 development plan, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines identifies early childhood education as critical to the development of the nation's human capital. And accordingly, it established as a priority the enhancement of early childhood education. If you go to our DEF plan, which is online at gov.vc, if you have no other access to it, you will see that they're written um, very, very, in a very pronounced way. So the overarching objective is, of course, consistent with the Sustainable Development Goals, which P.S. Williams mentioned. And... Uh, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as you know, signed on to the SDGs with another, with the remaining 192 member countries of the UN, UN system. The SDG 4, as you heard again from PS, speaks to quality education. And one of the indicators of this goal, number four, is the number of children under the age of five years old who are developmentally on track in health, learning, and psychosocial well-being. One of the easiest ways, I think, for us to track this particular indicator is to ensure that more of our children of preschool age are in preschool in an environment which is conducive to the aforementioned development indicators. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has, in addition to this project, which has been, has been collaborating with other donors, such as the Caribbean Development Bank and the European Union, in its thrust for early childhood education. For example, in some of our primary schools, we have included provisions for kindergarten, and also, we have made available in some schools as well a wide range of equipment and materials to support the development of early childhood education. And we are hoping that these would naturally enhance the learning. I also want to say at this point that the government applauds the entrepreneurial spirit which has fueled the opening of several pre-schools in our country. At the same time, we wish to support these preschools by offering solid guidelines and standards which are both which support these preschools and uh, which would guidelines and standards which would both be at the same time exciting and appropriate for our nation's children's development, but at the same time, which are also 21st century savvy. And this, this project aims to achieve all of those and to provide at the end of the day, a uniform, relatively uniform set of standards for implementation. This agreement we sign here today then is not merely a signal of our continued cooperation and collaboration, Madam OES representative. It is more. 
it signals a desire by both ourselves to ensure that our relations, relationships are manifest in pragmatic ways. While this grant may not be the largest project that we have ever implemented in terms of its monetary value, because it has the potential to impact thousands of our nation's children long into their developmental journey, it is huge in its impact. Senior Education Officer for Early Childhood within the Ministry of Education, National Reconciliation and Information, Gwyneth Cambridge, evidently appreciative of the positive step in upgrading the curriculum for early childhood education, thanked all stakeholders, including the OAS, for their support. On behalf of the Ministry of Education, National Reconciliation and Information, I want to say that it is a distinct pleasure to stand here and offer heartfelt thanks to the organization of the American states for this worthwhile contribution and, as it were, their input into education here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I want to thank Mrs. Laura Anthony Brown, Director of Economic Planning, in the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning for what I would call speaking from the bowels of the early childhood subsector. You captured so succinctly what we have always been saying that this framework is going to take us places. We move from a, 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 um, a situation where persons just go online and download guidelines. But if we have something that is domesticated for our Vincentian children, and by extension, the children within the other Caribbean countries can benefit, that would be a worthwhile venture. So thank you once again, Mrs. Laura Anthony Brown. I want to thank as well our permanent secretary, Mrs. Maureen Williams, and I want to thank her particularly for the faith she has in her early childhood subsector. The faith that she has that she knows that our vision is her vision. Administrative Technician of the OAS Office in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Diana Brown, pointed out the importance of the further development of the early childhood curriculum for the overall upliftment of the youth. This project will be executed in St. Vincent and the Grenadines during the period 2017-2021. I know we're already in 2018. The project, which is being facilitated by the organization's Development Corporation Funds Mechanism, the DCF, seeks to promote universal access to and strengthen the equitable delivery of comprehensive and quality childhood development for all children from the earliest stages of development, specifically through the creation of a unified project-based and student-centered curriculum, which integrated information and communication technologies into early childhood education. Education is regarded as one of the critical pillars for human and economic development and, de and the development and, and molding of young minds is a critical first step. The project sign in here today demonstrates the organization's real commitment to the social and economic development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines through education. With the injection of U.S. $83,000 into this project by the OAS, this new positive step is expected to reap numerous benefits for early childhood education here in the future. Sheridan Lewis, the API. You're viewing the presentation from the API. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll hear the success stories of four young entrepreneurs. And later, we have highlights from the opening of this year's Gospel Festival. The program will continue in just a moment. St. 
Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Welcome back. You're viewing the presentation from the API. The Business Club of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College recently held a lecture at the school's compound on entrepreneurship with the aim of offering an alternative to young people as they think about their future career paths. Four young entrepreneurs, mainly from the creative arts industry, shared their success stories with the students. Young college students recently had the experience to hear stories from young entrepreneurs about the challenges and joys of going it alone. Four entrepreneurs, Addison Edwards, Alex Barnwell, Carissa Taylor and Seniors Hines, shared their stories with the students and had some advice for future entrepreneurs. So firstly, my name is Seniors Hines and I am the founder of a company called Conservy a company which has to this date raised over $120,000. So that's something really good to start on. Thank you. But when I started, when I was younger, I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a doctor, or a teacher, or a scientist, or an astronaut. What every young person wants. For me, my entrepreneurial journey started here at the community college. So I came here to do an associate's degree in IT. Um, sadly, at that time, they didn't have any associate's degree in business. I don't think they did. No. Yeah, they probably didn't. So I loved IT. Um, when I was in grammar school, Form 4 and Form 5, I really loved being behind the computer and looking at code building websites, um, hacking into devices and stuff like that. That was fun. So when I came here, I decided I wanted to do something a bit more. And in my web design class, I made a small little mobile app which showed you deals and promotions for businesses in St. Vincent. From there, I went to Lime. It was Lime at the time, at least. And I knocked. And I asked for a meeting with the general manager of LIME. And at that point in my life, I did not know who the general manager of LIME was. I did not know anything about LIME, except the fact that I had a LIME sim. And I felt like if it's anything, they owed me because I always put on credit and call people. So I went and, they, and he, at the time, Leslie Jack, he said, you know, let's have a meeting in the next week. I went. And they really, really loved the idea. At that point, um, they were running a competition of who can build the most innovative mobile application. And so I went to them. They loved the idea, and they invested in me as an, as an individual. They invested a lot of money at that time, which led me from being a developer, developing things, to managing things. And that's how business started for me. So from there, from that point to now, through my company Conservy, I've been to Panama, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Trinidad, um, St. Vincent, and actual business um, endeavors, whether competitions, conferences, um, or meetings, which has been really, really rewarding for me. One thing I've learned in the past couple of years, because, um, I don't know, I, I am pretty young. I think I'm pretty young. Probably not as young as any of you here, but I'm done there. Um, what I've realized is, is that when, when you're starting on um, being an entrepreneur and starting your own product and doing your own business, the most important thing you can have is determination and the will to win, basically. The will to say that despite whatever is going to happen, I'm going to actually do it. At the age of 14, I was introduced to Photoshop. That was CS4, CS5 in those times. <laughs> at that time, I started out freelancing by myself, doing designs at home, turning not should say that. Turning people into other objects that they're not supposed to be looking like. But 
all those paved the way for me being here now. Now, in my first job was with Latoya Dereshi John. At that time, I wasn't experienced to anybody else. Nobody else knew about me. I was too scared to go to people. She contacted me, however, and proposed that she has a job for me as a graphic designer. I was too scared to go to the meeting because it was my first time, I did first impression comes. She contacted me by WhatsApp and arranged a voice call. That voice call went good. And uh, yes, she introduced me to the world of the profession. She molded me, which I must say, as an entrepreneur, you need a mentor. You cannot all do things by yourself. I'm sure everybody here has a mentor. You cannot do things by yourself. Believe that, OK, this is how it should go. My word is gospel. Somebody who has been in the business longer than you is going to know something you didn't. That, that lecture could prevent you from doing something that you would regret later down the road. On April the 28th, I launched the formal name Addy Designs and Artwork via social media, Instagram and Facebook. It was launched under the motto Develop, Create, Inspire. Develop ideas, create them, and from these designs, inspire others. Now, back then, I had no idea what I was getting into now. I wish I did. But now it has turned out to be very successful for me, and I don't regret that day of taking the leap. Now, there's a thing that people say, oh, it's nice, it's rewarding, but they don't look at the downsides of it. There are many sleepless nights, and uh, I wish I could butter it up for you, but you're going to lose. You're going to lose friendships, you're going to lose relationships. Some things that are very dear to you, you're going to lose. All of this you have to prioritize whether should I lose it for the better or should I keep it. Persons especially, this is a main problem that I find in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A lot of people complain about employment. That, oh, I can't find this job, or uh, this such and such is not going to hire me because I don't have experience. Each of us were given a talent by God. Why don't we use that and create our own employment? People look at talents these days as just running, skipping, jumping, cooking. What about mechanics, creative, videography, music production, web developers? People who cut grass for a living. You might laugh and say cut grass. But people have actually built companies just from cutting grass. I've been a music producer. I've been a graphic artist. I've been an engineer, I've been a software coder in programming, a network designer, analyst, consultant to the government in many different capacities, employee, former employee of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I've changed my face many times in life. Um, and that's just part of growth and that's just part of finding yourself. Where I started in my humble beginnings is actually in Canada. I am the product of a Vincentian family. I grew up there, I went to school up there, I had many challenges in Canada just being the minority and not the majority. And being the minority meant you had to work 10 times as hard to make yourself visible. Because when you're a tall, goofy looking black person like myself, you know what I mean, it makes you the victim of discrimination. And people just expect either to not consider you or to consider you. So because of your height, they expect you to play basketball, but really, I had a heart like census. I wanted to be a software programmer. And then people in society, they push you into something that you're not. So from a very young age, I spent a lot of time telling people no. Not in words, but I spent a lot of time telling people no in attitude, in rudeness, and being withdrawn and not really bringing myself to the table to play basketball to play football, to do the things that you stereotypically thought that a black person should do. No more than they think Italians know how to make pasta. No more than people think that Asian people are good at math. I am not what you think I am. I am who I am. All right? And that's what um, Canada afforded me. Fortunately for me, I had some very dynamic parents. And they put me through a lot of different challenges in life some pleasurable and some not. 
Uh, one was a very heavy institutionalized Christian life. I spent the majority of my life in the church, then I was a Muslim for about two years. <clears throat> and as my colleague said earlier on, you must have a mentor. My mentor is God, has always been and forever will be. All right, thank you, my dear. And there is a very profound reason for that, why I don't really make myself counsel to men or counsel to peers or counsel to other people and people who work with me, they will understand I'm very switched off. And I'm telling you this as business people so that you can help know yourself and find yourself. You are never gonna find yourself in somebody else. You are never gonna find yourself in the counsel of your peers. Everybody here is at school to learn. Everybody sitting around you is here to learn. The people talking outside are here to learn. They don't know anything. They don't know nothing. They have not reached the end result. They are all trying to reach the end result just like you. So why in Jesus' name would you ever make them your counsel or your advisor? It's ludicrous. It is absolutely stupid. The only thing that school and college is teaching you to do is how to learn in the capacity of the environment of your interests. So you are here, and if you're a business student, you're an IT student, you're an art student, it's teaching you how to be an adopter of that field. So Addison self-taught himself some things. He went and he played with Photoshop, he played Call of Duty, he understood different things. His hand-to-eye coordination is better than most people in this room. That's because he is a product of that environment. But if you put Addison inside another first person's perspective software, he will triumph because he's learned in the capacity of that software. He just knows how to learn in that environment. Never, ever slight education. I've always had a love for lipsticks, especially. Over the years, I did not realize that this little love would actually become something much of a business idea. It wasn't until my early 20s or so, I started exploring, I started researching about different types of lip products and how I can actually turn this love into something that could probably give me an extra dollar on the side or so. All right, so I did my research, which was not in depth because I think for me, one of my biggest challenges is that I don't have much patience. I am a patient person when it comes to my personality and who I am as a being, but when it comes to actually putting things on a professional level, I don't have much patience. I, I personally think I don't have much patience on that level. I like to know that there's a plan and we go through the plan and then the plan should just go smoothly and it should execute and there should be no challenges, but that's not the reality of the world. So I did my little research and then I started RECI in April of 2014 and actually next month she will be two years old. When Reese was started, we started with only traditional matte sticks. So that's the screw tip that you have to apply, like not the liquid ones, the, you know, like long time days, like the Marilyn Monroe lipstick, we have to take off the tap and screw up and screw back down. And then if the stick break or if it's too hot, the stick might melt. Like that's what it, I started with that lipstick. It started well, but then reality hits me that I did not pay attention to my target market and in doing so the shades that I introduced weren't flattering to most women because I mean we are majority majority um darker shades women in St. Vincent, you hardly find, well not hardly, but the majority of our population, you may find persons looking my skin tone or your skin tone and not some more of the fairer complexions. So the shades that I had, I think at the time complemented more so fairer complexions. So it was well received, yes. Everything was going nice, yes, but I still think that it was not enough. What I could have done, I could have settled for the way it was and said, well, this is my product. You either like it, love it, or leave it. But that was not the attitude I grew up on, and that was not the attitude I was about to adapt. 
local entrepreneurs sharing their experiences with students of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College to help them determine their career paths. The presentation from the API will continue after the break. Stay with us for highlights from Gospel Fest 2018. A lot goes into shaping an individual, but it all starts here. What may seem to us like simple fun is critical to their education and overall development. It's how they start to define and understand the speech, how they develop their motor skills and hand-eye coordination. Remember, children are never too young to learn. This message was brought to you by the UNICEF Office for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, the Caribbean Child Support Initiative, and this station. Welcome to the final segment of the presentation from the API. The Digicel SVG Gospel Festival 2018 was officially opened on Sunday, April 1st at the Victoria Park under the theme, A Glorious Celebration of the Gospel. The festival continues throughout the month, ending with a national showcase on April 29th at the Victoria Park. Here are some highlights of the opening. Open Gospel Fest 2018. This is Resurrection Day. This is the day when Jesus Christ came back to life. And we are told from the scriptures that he's now seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. And today he makes intercession for us. And we're also told in scripture that we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So today is a good day to rejoice. Today is a good day to celebrate the fact that you're a Christian and that Jesus is your victor and he's your champion. Oh, no, no. Personally, that the church is the center of the community. The church is our haven. It is our spiritual haven. It is our source of joy. It is our source of counsel. It is our source of safety. 
it is our anchor. So as a business, and a business that takes its corporate citizenship and its corporate responsibility seriously, this is a natural marriage. The theme this year is a glorious celebration. And so we have a month of praise and worship. And we start this evening, Easter Sunday. It is a call to positive living. We are celebrating, there are going to be lots of things happening on the stage. But this is not a party. It is not a fete. It is ministry. And in ministry, all of us, you out there, as well as those on this side of the lights, are called to positive living, to reflecting on the meaning of life, to reflecting on this particular day about the meaning of the resurrection, and making it change our lives. Gotta be where you are. If you want to be in glory with the most high, sing it. A joyful noise unto the Lord. of the death of a man on a cross called Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. That is the reason why we preach. He is the reason why we live. Jesus Christ is the reason why we sing, why we dance, why we clap, why we celebrate. He is the center of our celebration. Thank God for the cross this evening. We celebrate the fact that as a result of Jesus Christ, the blind received sight, the lame walk, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead was raised, and the gospel message continues to radically transform lives. I am a testimony tonight of the radical transformation of the power of God. Hallelujah. And so I come tonight to remind us that this glorious celebration of the gospel is because the Heavenly Father saw a great need and he sent his son to save us. One author says, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, 
God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But tonight, our greatest need was forgiveness of sin. So God sent us a savior. Hallelujah. This is worthwhile celebrating. When you think about what God has done for us on the cross, that we will have forgiveness. This is the reason why we celebrate tonight. Friends, he never wrote a book. Yet all the libraries of the world could not hold the books that, has been, that have been written about him. He never wrote a song. And yet he has furnished the team for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never founded a college. But all the schools put together cannot boast of having as many students. He never marshaled an army, nor drafted a soldier, nor fired a gun. And yet, no leader ever had more volunteers who have, under his orders, made more rebels stack arms and surrender without a single fired shot. against every evil spirit in this country that is not of you. We find them in the name of Jesus. Wash me again. Holy Ghost, come cleanse me again. Cleanse me again. Cleanse me again. 
Holy Ghost come fill me again, fill me again, fill me again. Jesus, let your spirit take control. All in the sudden, Holy Ghost come watch me. Holy Ghost come cleanse me. Holy Ghost come fill our earth. Oh, you well. Lord, I am praying, praying for this country. Holy Ghost come take control. Then I tell it. Tonight at this altar, tonight at the altar, I talking to God, praying for the leaders and all the believers. Tonight at this altar, I talking to God. Tonight, he opposes me. He's my buckler, shield, high tower, death none greater than Jehovah. Say. Every rank of evil of the enemy Put your armor on, stand up and be strong For the battle, hey, come on, jump, sir. And on that glorious note, we end this evening's presentation from the Agency for Public Information. You've been viewing highlights from the opening of Gospel Festival 2018. Remember, activities will continue throughout the month, ending with a national showcase at the Victoria Park on April 29th. Thank you very much for viewing the presentation from the API. Remember to join us again on Thursday DV at 8 p.m. when we will be back with another informative presentation. Until next time, I am Shana Daniel. Good night and God bless.